y'all welcome back to my channel today's video as you can see from the title i am going to be giving advice on how to move out on your own for the first time i did kind of already do one of these videos before about four years ago now when i actually moved out by myself on my own in 2020 that's where i got a lot of y'all from so you can check out that video right here i'm not going to talk about too much of the same stuff that's in that one i want to kind of give a different kind of perspective especially now that i've lived about four places on my own now because <laughs> i've been moving every year so yeah if you're new here hey girl my name is akira janae don't forget to subscribe and join the family before you leave so a few months ago i asked um what type of videos did you guys want somebody said advice on moving out for the first time so this whole video is gonna kind of be dedicated to moving out by yourself for the first time um just all things that <laughs> so i do have notes right here we're gonna get straight into it First things first, like I said, I'm not going to kind of repeat. I'm going to try not to repeat the same things that's in this video. We're going to try to steer into a different direction. So I wanted to say map out a budget plan first off um, before you even try to look at apartments, anything like that. Of course, you need to look at apartment and see the prices of things. But first off, you need to figure out your own budget. Like, are you able to pay all your bills on time? um know when everything is due i use this um if i can find it i'll put it down below i got it from pinterest some girl who has like a free template you just got to sign up for her email subscription and it literally has a budget plan it got the envelope method it got a calendar it got debt snowballs sinking funds all of that definitely recommend either doing it on pen and paper that's what i do doing it on your ipad good notes a budgeting app anything like that i really like to recommend the rocket app this is not sponsored um i do pay a monthly subscription for it you can pay whatever you want to pay to them um i think it's like either three or four dollars up to like 12 or 15 dollars and they'll let you pick whichever whichever price you think you should pay for it so I obviously pay like four dollars <laughs> so definitely create a budget for yourself once you have your budget for your bills that you have now whether that's just phone bill if you help out with you know your parents or anything figure that out first second one you can now kind of start looking for apartments um i recommend look everywhere in your area make sure it's a nice neighborhood roll around scope out the scene that's what i do before i even set up an appointment i'll just roll past the apartments and see the neighborhood and stuff so i recommend i i be going to see like six eight different apartments at a time if you are in a bigger city you may want to look at a little bit more and it can be overwhelming but depending on what your wants and needs are that kind of depends on how many apartments you will look at because every apartment ain't gonna offer everything you want so basically if you want a washer and dryer inside your unit a lot of apartments sometimes don't offer that especially in bigger cities they'll just have like a laundromat on site or they'll just have washer and dryer hookups or you can rent from them so if you want it included in your rent you know then you may only be able to look at this x amount of apartments see what i mean so look into that i say for sure even my city like my city isn't big i've looked at dang near every apartment here in little rock so i definitely recommend looking at at least like six to eight apartments for sure starting out get a feel for the neighborhoods um the amenities that's on site um kind of the neighbors like if neighbors are walking around i literally i'll stop and ask them how do you like living here like i want to get you know the scoop on it before i actually sign my lease here and be stuck with y'all for you know x amount of months so some people like to say save up to about six months of rent in a perfect world that's fine or if you are a really really good financial <laughs> financial person then you may already you know have that me Back in 2020, no ma'am, I definitely did not. I got that STEMI and that's how I got up out of my parents' <laughs> house. But the thing is, I went off to college at 18. So I have not lived with my parents since I was 18. I've had roommates in college. I live with my best friend in the town home. And then in 2020, I moved back with my parents to go to nursing school. And then after that, I moved out living like completely by myself. So I, um, I was getting paid every week from Big Lots. I used my stimulus check and all of that. So I had about three, $4,000 saved up from just that so i do recommend at least three months um because like i said life be life in and unexpected things always happen especially maybe if you have a child or anything like that you know everybody's different you just never know but for sure have at least three months rent saved up and set that aside separately from what you're going to pay up front because you are going to have to do deposits administration fees um depending on if all utilities included or if they're not included my last apartment all of my utilities was included um 
lights, water, trash, sewer, valet trash at that. Like everything was included. Only thing I had to pay every month was my rent. Didn't have to worry about nothing else. Here, everything's included. We got a utility package for $80 for a two bedroom. Um, other than that, I do got to pay my light bill. So you're going to need a deposit for your light bill because I use Entergy. So you got to give them a deposit um, depending on your internet, if internet, not, you know, it's just so many little bitty bills that come after you just having to pay rent and all of that. So make sure you have enough to pay up front for all of those little bitty necessities that you'll need. And another thing that a lot of people ask me about is credit. Um, in 2020, I had a credit card, so I was kind of getting, I had the Discover student credit card. Um, I talk about that in that other video. So that kind of helped me out. If you have nothing on your credit, I feel like they'll still let you get it. Some people are iffy. It just depends on how strict the apartment complex is. And some apartment complexes, if your credit is bad or you don't have any credit, you will have to have a co-signer or a guarantor. Or sometimes they'll just let you go ahead and get approved and you'll just have to pay an extra fee on top of the deposit. So basically, my last apartment, for example, our deposit was $500 flat out. And one of my friends who lived out there, she had to pay $900 because of her credit. So it's just different for everybody. Um, some apartments will say your deposit could be all the way up until your month's rent. So that's literally insane. But I mean, it just goes down to how bad you want that apartment or if you want to go try another apartment and try to get approved for that. Definitely keep that in mind. That's all I can really say about credit. Um, it's, I mean, it's honestly just hit and miss. Like some people are more lenient than others. You'll just have to kind of just ask them. And I asked too, like, before I apply, I'll be like, you know, what, what credit score y'all looking for? You know, like, don't be scared to ask questions while you're there in that leasing office. For sure, ask everything. If you are scared to kind of ask it face to face, just call on the phone. They ain't gonna know who you are. <laughs> okay, my boyfriend called me and wrote me. He picking up some stuff and stuff for me. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Um, my next point is to buy periodically over time. Um, if you are still living with your parents, whatever the case may be, um, don't try to move out and then try to just furnish your whole apartment within like that first week or even that whole month. I know some people do that, but financially, I just feel like, yeah, you're just going to tank all your money <laughs> down the drain. So like I said, I worked at Big Lots. I got paid every week and I feel like working at some type of retail store, furniture store, anything like that, um, you're able to really use that to your advantage. I got, well, 20% of discounts since I worked there and I literally bought groceries from there. I bought all of my household stuff there just over time, you know, over the weeks. Um, so if you do know somebody or family member, anything that, you know, work at Walmart or anything like that, use their discount and then just kind of buy over time. Um, so like I said, since this wasn't my like very first apartment ever, I did already have a TV, already had, you know, a mattress bed, all of that. Only thing I had to buy was a couch and then I bought another TV since I had a two bedroom. So I didn't have to buy too much and my first apartment came with washer and dryer so I didn't have to buy that. Um, where I'm at now, in my last place, it didn't come with washer and dryer so I did actually buy like my own washer and dryer but I'm keeping that from when I moved to a house. But, <laughs> but the point is to just buy over time. Um, don't feel pressure to try to have your, you know, apartment furnished. Make sure it's exactly how you want it. Don't rush anything. My next point, kind of piggybacking off of that, don't settle for an apartment. Um, if you really, really want one and, you know, maybe you get denied or you don't have enough money for it or whatever, I say don't settle. But also, I feel like you also need that stepping stone apartment. So my very first apartment, um, I can tell y'all now because obviously I don't live there. Um, I lived at the Greens in my mail. It's, you know, it was a nice apartment, whatever. I moved because it was a lot going on out there. <laughs> Not gonna lie, but the apartment itself was nice. It was very affordable at the time. It was like $730 for rent. I think now it's probably not even like $800 or over $800. So it's not too bad, but I feel like that definitely was a stepping stone in my like whole apartments because without that one i feel like that definitely prepared me to be able to manage a little bit better like it was cheap so i was able to have you know money left over out my check and just budget so it all comes back to budgeting so i don't really want to say because you know so, i don't know it's kind of controversial people say you know don't live above your means and stuff like that which i agree with but if you want something nice then get something nice but also if you can't afford it, girl, don't be getting it. <laughs> so that's why I'm like, the greens was nice. It was very affordable, but I just wanted luxury. I wanted something better. I wanted to walk in shower. I wanted rainfall shower head. I wanted granite countertops. I wanted stainless steel appliances, like all of these wants. <laughs> 
and the greens was not checking that out so obviously staying there somewhere cheaper at the time did allow me to kind of you know build my money set my money up and then that's why i've been moving every year because i feel like each apartment i've been in just gets better and better so I definitely recommend kind of going that route as well or unless you know you're definitely able to afford everything you want then go ahead and go for it but that for me living on my own for the first time I definitely wasn't trying to pay no two thousand dollar rent you you know what I'm saying <laughs> so that's why I like that also when you actually do find the apartment you want get approved and all of that um get to know a neighbor it's kind of it's kind of awkward and weird sometimes like I don't really talk to my neighbors one of them I talked to and that's only because it was a fire alarm going off and we was just out there chit chatting and stuff but I definitely recommend getting to know or just talking to like one of your neighbors if they don't seem weird or crazy um people are weird that's why I don't really talk too much it's kind of like a hi or a bye but you know she had kids she told me you know she was a nurse like she, she was really cool or whatever and then we also knew a mutual person so that was why it was really really good to kind of talk to her because you know they can look out for your packages we we all have ring cameras all of that but one of my friends she actually lived on the second floor under me so it's easier for me to be able to like go out of town i went to cali last month and some one of my one of my neighbors put a note on the door and then i told my other neighbor to come upstairs and tell me you know what it said my friend um it was her dog got attacked up here girl but anyways <laughs> that's that um just kind of get to know somebody in your community i feel like that is definitely beneficial um me as an intro introvert and being shy is definitely hard but that's why i'm glad i actually have a friend that stay here so yeah that's good also I wanted to say make sure your management is good um you don't want anybody that literally don't care about anything that needs to be fixed you don't want nobody that don't answer the phone you don't want nobody that don't be up in the office close early leave early like that's not good signs of good management so definitely take that into account also piggybacking off of um Piggybacking off of the fees, um, I also forgot to mention about renter's insurance. Some apartments do require that. Some apartments have it through like a certain company that you can get through them if you don't already have yours to bring to them. Also, I wanted to mention as a woman living alone, since that's what y'all asked me about moving out on your own for the first time, definitely safety. I do have an Amazon storefront and I have a category for safety items. Um, I have a latch for my door. I have a door stopper alarm. I have a alarm system here built in. I have a ring doorbell camera and I have something else as well. <laughs> so that's why I really, really do stress to get something like that. The latch definitely makes me feel more secure, especially because I was listening to the breakfast club um, and the maintenance man had went in and like basically basically almost killed this girl i just randomly heard it um in cali or whatever and like you can't even trust the maintenance man now so my maintenance man just came and replaced the bulbs and like he's looking you know he kind of you know looked around or whatever and then while he's up on the ladder he looking in here and was like oh like where'd you get that brick from or how did you put that brick up there my brick wallpaper and i'm like it's wallpaper why the f does it matter so even during the day i still keep that latch on my door that latch literally can't nobody get up in there so you just never know like i could be laying down and then i may you know somebody could just try to come up in here so i do keep that on my door or like the door stop or something i do recommend getting all of those safety features something that makes you feel safe like i said i sleep so much better at night my friend always be like you you um uh, I don't know she called me something but I'm like I watch too much crime shows true crime and see crime <laughs> that I'm like nah player like we're not even about to go through that so definitely check out my Amazon storefront for my little safety items um it just makes me feel a hundred times better and I mean better safe than sorry right last thing I wanted to mention is I probably should have mentioned this first but go to Pinterest um if you are confused of like what you need Pinterest does have really really good checklists <laughs> excuse me on there for like apartment checklists 
um, like cleanings, like all kind of things. Pinterest is definitely your friend to go to. It's definitely what I went to um, when I first moved out. Of course, like I said, this wasn't my first ever like apartment, but so I did already have like, you know, most of my apartment stuff, but just to make sure I had other things that maybe I didn't think about, Pinterest definitely helped me out on that. So yeah, if you have any other questions, you can comment them down below. I, like I said, I don't want to talk too much in this. Um, hopefully that helped you guys and answer some of your questions and gave you a little bit more advice and insight um but the top things make sure you budget make sure you're in a good community make sure you get those um safety features for sure um as well as i used to have like a keypad too so that definitely helped out then like trying to use like a key and stuff so i love that um because the one that i had in my old apartment it, it generated a new code every time like a maintenance man or you know somebody had to come in so that kind of gave me a little bit more security as well so yeah, hope that helps. Those are my top tips for you guys. I don't know how many tips that was, but I definitely hope that helped. As always, don't forget to like this video, comment, and subscribe. And until my next video, I will see you lovely then. Bye, guys.